Man at arms. So what is man at arms? He can be played as a full support, buffer, stress healer, taunter, tank, damage, repast, removing dodge crits from enemies. He got self-sustain also. Basically, this is an all-around character that can cover position 1 to 4, but he doesn't do anything perfectly well out of those positions and out of all of those skills. He is not as good in damage as, for example, Leper or Highwayman. He is not as good in Repost as Highwayman. He is not as good in healing stress like a Jester. He is not as good at, at uh, you know, every freaking skill in the game, but he can do it all. The only hero in the game that can really do it all, but there are penalties for that. Very useful champion, okay? Especially, especially for those that want to learn how to play the game. He's a bit tricky because of his passives, but we're gonna pass through every skill and every, every passive, and I'll teach you how to play Man at Arms. The first one is, of course, Bread and Butter skill, Crush, okay? Works in positions 1 and 2, covers positions 1, 2, and 3 on enemies. If enemies are in combo, you're gonna heal. Simple as that. Classic basic attack. Useful mostly on all classes, especially useful on Vanguard, because Vanguard in a passive gives 50% damage to crush. The next skill is Rampart. Okay, this is a shield attacking skill, works in positions 3, 2, and 1, moves him forward, and you can also daze enemies or even stun them if you combine this with combo. All right, Blue Skull. What is important to say about this skill? You should never use it on Vanguard. You should only use this skill on uh, Bulwark, okay? If Man at Arms comes with Bulwark passive, that's when this is your primary skill Rampart and you're gonna play without Crush. So this is your main attack in case of Bulwark instead of Vanguard. Next skill is Defender, valid on Vanguard, Sergeant, and Bulwark passives, okay, even on basic man at arms, especially good when you are starting the game and you're learning how to play. Basically, what you do, you armor up yourself and you protect your squishes when enemies attack squishes. They attack man at arms instead. Extremely useful for the beginners. Once you master the game, you'll probably forget that Defender exists because there are a lot of better spells than. Defender, but definitely great for the starters. Bolster, most important spell in the game as far as Man at Arms go. Why? Very simple, it removes stress when upgraded, it removes stress from Man at Arms, and one more ally that you're gonna pick, alright? Once upgraded, it's gonna remove two stress, and I can't even explain how important it is to keep your team sane enough without stress. Because once you get stressed out, you can forget about your run. This spell goes on Vanguard, Sergeant, and Bulwark passives. It doesn't matter who you decide to play with. Bolster is a must. Hold the line. Extremely important. If you get out of position, if you're spot number one or two, you get shuffled, you get moved or so on, Hold the line is what's gonna reorganize your team and put Man at Arms back in front with armor and he's gonna become immobilized so no one else can move him. This is valid on Vanguard, on Sergeant and on Bulwark. Extremely important spell. Also, it can stun if it's in combo, once upgraded of course. Next skill below. Look, uh, enemies later on on maps, they can open up with like three or four dodge tokens, all right? Uh, three or four repasts, crits, armor, everything, all right? Uh, this spell works from position one to four, and forget about that it reduces speed of enemies because it won't work every time, all right? What is the most important here? you can remove dodge from all enemies with one simple skill, okay? Only one simple skill will remove it all. Very valid on a sergeant, okay? And perhaps on bulwark. Vanguard should never use below. Here we go. The best 
skill as far as defense and offense goes is retribution the skill that you should always upgrade first okay the skill that will take you out to the far end of the game is retribution retribution is extremely valid on vanguard because vanguard uh, has 50 percent damage on repast and retribution gives repast it also taunts enemies and it gives armor once upgraded it's completely valid on both Vanguard, on Sergeant, and on Bulwark. This is just, you know, the best thing there is. Uh, Bulwark comes with minus 50% damage on Repast, while Vanguard comes with 50% damage on Repast. Okay. Even, even if Bulwark comes with minus 50%, and most of the people will tell you how it's not good on a Bulwark, I'm telling you right now, it's good. Why? Because you taunt enemies, they hit men at arms. If they got dodge, he removes dodge with repast. Even if it doesn't deal damage, it's gonna deal like 1 HP. It's still gonna remove dodge, no matter if he hits or not. Retribution is the most important spell in the bloody game. Simple as that. Command. Command is valid on both Vanguard, Sergeant, and Bulwark. Uh, when do you use Command? You use Command if you play with Leper in the team. So if Leper is position number one and like he is here, here, or here, it doesn't matter. Depends what passive you get for Men at Arms. But this is when you want to use Command. So, so why? Because you can remove blind from leper, because we know that leper is blind, so he can actually hit. Not only that you remove blind from leper, you also gonna give him damage, and leper hurts like crazy, especially when combined with command. That's when command is valid and good to play, only with a leper in team. For everything else, for everyone else, it ain't worth investing. It doesn't matter if you play with Vanguard Men at Arms, Sergeant Men at Arms, or Bulwark Men at Arms, only use Command when you have a Leper. Stand Fast. Stand Fast, alright, and Courageous Abandon are connected. These two spells, if you plan to play, you're gonna play like this. Now, how do you play with Stand Fast? First of all, Stand Fast is only good on a Bulwark passive, okay? Why on a Bulwark? Very simple. Bulwark passive instead of a Vanguard. When you use Stand Fast, it gives two rounds of Taunt. So it's not only self buff, it's also Taunt. Okay. So what it means, it means that you protect your team when you're a Bulwark and you use Stand Fast. Okay. Think of it as a retribution, but Retribution has Repass, while Stand Fast has Courageous Abandon. So you need to use two skills on Bulwark, and one of them is Courageous Abandon. Why? Because when you get armor to Stand Fast and Downed, then if you decide to attack, you deal 100% more damage as a Bulwark, alright, when you have armor up from Stand Fast. And that's how these two skills work, basically. Okay. Now, some will say, if you taunt them, they're gonna remove armor from men at arms. Yeah, sometimes, but with respite, if you give him armor when the round starts or when the combat starts, you know how it goes, there are different passives in the end and he's gonna have three usages of armor, alright? So that means that you can wreck someone with courageous abandon at the very start. And trust me, this thing bloody hurts. So both of these are for Bulwark. The last in line is Strategic Withdrawal. When do we use Strategic Withdrawal? We use it on all three passives, on Vanguard, Sergeant, and Bulwark, but never during the maps. Why I'm saying so? First of all, you're gonna use it on a third map and onwards. So for the third map and the final boss, you do not use it on the first two maps. Why? First, it needs to be upgraded, to actually be good because it bloody sucks flat like this as you can see it sucks all right once you upgrade you'll never heal your men at arms again once he reaches death's door when he's about to die this thing strategic withdrawal will heal him up 33 percent of his hp and he usually has huge health pool so 
33% is a lot. This is the spell that you should completely avoid as a starter. This is a spell that's gonna sustain bosses, that's gonna sustain cosmic bosses, cosmic enemies on a third map, and of course, for the final boss of the chapter. You should never use it before that. You need to use it upgraded. Without upgrades, this skill absolutely sucks. With upgrades, it's a lifesaver, and it's extremely good because, again, it gives armor, it gives speed, Okay, it makes combo out of target, and what's most important, it brings him back from death. So you never need to heal many times, you can focus on healing someone else with your healers. Okay, that's how it goes, so valid on Vanguard, Sergeant, and Bulwark, but never during the maps. How do we play Vanguard many times? We play him with Crush, Defender, for the starters, of course, Bolster. Hold the line and retribution. On the first 10, no matter who's in your team, you'll immediately upgrade a retribution with your first mastery token. No exceptions, no thinking about it. This is your first upgrade. Once you know what you're doing, you're gonna switch defender for below, okay? And once you're in a third map as a vanguard and for the boss fights, you're gonna switch below for strategic withdrawal on a third map and against the final boss and you're gonna upgrade strategic withdrawal and this is how we play uh, Vanguard many at arms. So map number one, upgrade retribution. Map number two, we go like this. Map number three and the final boss Vanguard, we go like this. This is how you play Vanguard. If you have a leper in your team and you play as a Vanguard, then you play like this, all right? Even better, if you have a stress healer and a leper in your team, you play like this as a vanguard. That's everything there is to know for the vanguard. Now, if it says sergeant instead of vanguard, this is how we're gonna play. Hold the line, retribution, command, bolster, and defender. This is one way to play uh, sergeant man at arms. He can be played at every position. Best to put him on spot number 4 or 3 and make someone that deals damage on spot number 2 and 1. So this is like a full support. Alright. Of course, Sergeant can be also be played with a below if you don't plan to use Defender. But basically, Defender is good on a Sergeant. Alright. At the very end, you will need Strategic Withdrawal and move many at arms at spot number 2 till he gets on a Death's Door. And once you self-heal on a dead Door, he'll place himself on spot number three, move backwards, and that's about it. What I would like to say, if you get Sergeant Man at Arms, do not play Sergeant, okay? Because you really, really need to know what you're doing with a Sergeant. It ain't easy to play Sergeant Man at Arms. You need to be good at the game. You need like 50 hours in and you really need to know all compositions and what works. Why? Because you're gonna be... Uh, switching the skills from fight to fight non-stop and you won't use damage skills at all, okay? What you're gonna switch is all of this and it depends on your entire team. Just avoid Sergeant if you're a beginner. The last passive would be Bulwark instead of Vanguard and this is how you're supposed to play Bulwark. Bulwark doesn't use his weapon, he uses his shield to deal damage, his stress heals, alright? He also need to have some movement if you get shuffled and hold the line is the best so he remains at spot number one and two specifically at spot number one all right and for the damage he's gonna use stand fast he's gonna taunt with stand fast when he's a bulwark and he's gonna deal insane amount of damage with courageous abandon this is one way to play if if you have a leper in your team you want to play him as a shield rampart okay but you're gonna remove this too now you're gonna use command and you can use defender below or strategic withdrawal i recommend defender during map one below during map two and of course strategic withdrawal as a bulwark for the final map and the final boss that would be all passives for men at arms now are hero shrines important for men at arms yes they are you want to max him out as fast as you can because as you can see he's very versatile he can be played in all positions one to four in a lot of different ways all right he's everything 
in the game from damage to defender to stress healer to self sustain healer to i don't know what he just absolutely everything so yes you need to find those hero shrines and upgrade him fast it's very important for men at arms if vanguard you're gonna upgrade uh a retribution for your first kill if Sergeant, you're gonna upgrade Bolster or Retribution for your first skill. If Passive is Bulwark, you're gonna upgrade Rampart as your first skill. Very good skills to upgrade if Bulwark would be Standfast and Courageous Abandon. Now how to play Man at Arms? It really depends, I already told you. So, Vanguard, Sergeant and Bulwark cover position 1-4. to four. The most important by far on all of those, and I said why, is Retribution. You should always open up with Retribution. It's simple as that, especially once upgraded. Alright. Why? The reason is very simple. He retaliates back twice. Okay, and now he's gonna kill someone. You see how strong Retribution is. Of course, uh, instead of Retribution, it, I already explained how every spell and skill works, but I'll say it again, it really depends on his passive. Right? Sometimes you're gonna open up with Stress Heal, sometimes you're gonna open up, most of the times you're gonna open up with Retribution. If it's a Bulwark, you're gonna open up with Stand Fast, Okay, if someone is in danger in your allies, okay, in terms of stress or in terms of health, you're gonna defend. Man at Arms is extremely versatile, but Retribution is the way to go. Usually in 95% of the cases when you open up fights, it goes with Retribution. Now it all depends from your team's setup, it depends from the current situation. It's a tricky class to master. You're gonna need to switch those spells non-stop before entering fights. Depends on the enemies you're fighting with, okay? It just... You need to play as men at arms. You need to play like 10, 15, 20 hours to master this class. Now, what are the good trinkets for men at arms? The first trinket would be pristine lure. Very simple. It gives him taunt. If he bleeds, it's not a big issue because you can always heal him. He's self-sustainable and it's good for him to bleed. Alright. Because he's got a lot of HP. Greater Clotting Cruor also gives flat bleed resist solid on Men at Arms. One of the very good trinkets on Men at Arms is also Hint of Home because of the self-heal. He's gonna get hit a lot. Nice one to have is also Dead Ringer because you're gonna daze enemies and then you can stun them with your shield as men at arms. From Repost, you can always use Strange Sepper to apply Vulnerable on enemies, and when you miss, you're gonna apply Armor on them, but that's life. A Stone Mount is good because it converts his armor to even better armor, 75% uh, mitigation. So, not bad at all on men at arms. Guarding Gauntlet is also valid. Greater hit shield, very valid on men at arms, 66% fire resist. Now, hastening history is also good, but you need to make sure that your speed is lower or equal than 2. Greater wolf's blood is absolutely great on every character in the game. If you get it, men at arms can always profit out of it. It's plus 6 flat to speed, no penalties. Seaman's boots, when moving, and we know that men at arms can move, he can get shield or dodge, depends on his speed, not bad at all. Insulating insignia, extremely good on men at arms, really, really good on men at arms. But stressing band is also very valid on men at arms, because it gives crit. Greater heart seeker, absolutely amazing on every hero in the game, especially on a leper, but men at arms can also profit out of it a lot. Greater Sharpness Charm, same what I said for the previous trinket, this one, everyone can profit out of it. Of course, Men at Arms too. Now, Greater Bouncer's Belt is a good one to have on Men at Arms, especially since you're gonna taunt enemies a lot, which means that once he receives healing, he's gonna heal for 25% more. That's a lot. It's very good on Men at Arms. Greater Cleansing Sensor, solid on Men at Arms. Greater Hail Drought, extremely good on Men at Arms if you're gonna taunt. 
It gives HP bonus 22%, nothing else to say about it, extremely nice. Greater Anchoring Charm, also good on men at arms, he cannot be moved, he cannot be stunned. Greater Sacrificial Host, he cannot get plagued, 66% flat, no penalties, very good on men at arms. Greater Gilded Mind is one of the best trinkets in the game for absolutely every class. Nothing else to say about it. Good on men at arms, good on everyone. If your speed is less than 2, 2 or less, Calibrating Sensor will give you armor. Good on slow men at arms. Now, if you find an item called Fisherman's Net, it's a consumable, alright? And if you go into Repost, this can be pretty much insane because you got 15% chance to stun on every hit. And you're gonna hit a lot with Retribution and Repost. This might be a very good cheese to play Men at Arms. Standard of the ninth. Men at Arms specific trinket for Courageous Abandon. Alright, for that sweet Death's Door heal. Now it also has 50% crit chance. But aside from that, each ally on combat start will get armor. Upgraded armor, 75% damage mitigation extremely extremely good on men at arms one of the best trinkets in the game for men at arms now enlightening element can also be disgusting on men at arms because of the repast you can apply burn on hit every time when you repast and you're gonna repast like crazy with retribution so think about it galvanizing goblet okay can be solid if you know how to control stress and HP on men at arms. Better to say if his health is high, he won't get stressed out. Now, of course, celebrated shell is better on some other champions, but also men at arms can use it if you know how to control relics and bubbles above 50 straight up positives with speed and crit chance, but better on someone else to be honest. During Koopa, you deal uh, 3 Blight damage on every repost, 33% chance for it to happen, very nice, and you get Blight Resist if HP is above 75%, solid on Men at Arms. Nautical Compass, absolutely crazy on Men at Arms, if you get it, it's a very valid trinket. Now, here we go, Undeserved Commendation, unique Men at Arms trinket. If you have a Leper in your team, and you use commands that removes blind and gives him 50% damage. Now, there is a 33% chance that Leper will crit 100% when Men at Arms gives him command because of this trinket. What it means? It means that Leper is spot number one, Men at Arms is spot number two. You rack up command, he gets damage and crit at the same time. God forgive when Leper crits on enemies. Okay, that's one shot, no matter who it is across Leper. This is a very unique trinket for a very unique team composition for a command Leper Men at Arms. Now, of course, clarifying Karkanet, you need to really be lucky and to know what you're doing to keep relics and bubbles above 75, but flat HP and damage, 20%, extremely good. Again, you need to know what you're doing for this trinket. Reverberating Redoubt, insane on Men at Arms, extremely good trinket. You apply two damage when you get hit, you're gonna taunt enemies a lot, non-stop. They're gonna hit Men at Arms and they're gonna receive two damage per hit, plus his repost that's gonna deal damage. And if speed is below 2, there's a 20% chance you're gonna get extra action, which also means that you can stress heal, buff up, or, I don't know, taunt enemies, or uh, remove dodge from them, depends on what skills you play if you get extra action, but this, this thing is insane on Men at Arms. Another insane item with retribution for Men at Arms is Clenching Claws. If and when he gets hit, there's a 20% chance that he lower their damage, make them vulnerable, or 10% chance to insta-stun enemies. Extremely good. Bates 4 Teller. It's solid on Men at Arms. If you don't have anything else to equip, go with it. From Beyond, it's used only for the bosses, or better to say for the final boss because of the Mortality Resist. 
Now, what about low tier trinket? Basically, for many times, first of all, it depends uh, about his passive class. All right, what is he? Is he a vanguard, a sar sergeant, a bulwark? All right, but mostly with those low tiers, okay? You want healing received on him. You want uh, maximum HP up, okay? You want flat resists, okay? Like the most important thing that you can get is uh, stress resist. All right, this icon on trinkets. Move resist. Maybe some of the burn, blight, bleed resists on him because he's gonna taunt with retribution a lot. No matter the passive here, of course, because those are all low tier trinkets, basically. But that's what you should aim for at the start of the game, okay? Like, you can sacrifice speed on men at arms. It's not bad if you have a lot of speed and you open up with retribution, but usually you won't get bursted out in the first round. That, that happens very rare. Later on, you'll get your speed through in items. So, for the start, classic, classic trinkets on him. As long, of course, as you go and you upgrade a retribution. The final thing we need to talk about is respite and what you use on many times. What you use, you're gonna taunt a lot, okay? And what you want to use is things like this, okay? Holy beads, for example. They give him armor and speed, all right? You wanna use you. You wanna use everything that gives positive effects on him. You, of course, you want to raise his health with food because you're gonna taunt and he's gonna receive a lot of damage in the front lines you might want to use traveling heal on him you want to use all of those in buffs that will raise his bleed resistance uh blight resist uh, disease resist fire resist okay classic tanky stuff on him if if you encounter things like this okay that you can give to two characters uh 50 damage up you can give it to men at arms if he is a vanguard if he is a sergeant you do not give him that if he's a bulwark you can do it if he's your only damage with a shield attack but basically only vanguard should get damage buffs in the end okay no one else he should get all the defensive buffs and if vanguard repost then consider taking things like this mastery and what's important to upgrade he's very versatile and every spell that you see here is equally important depends whether you play with vanguard sergeant or bulwark no matter who you play with retribution is the skill that will carry you throughout the entire game okay and that's your first upgrade after that it it really depends what you are and what team you consist of if you have a jester in your team you don't upgrade bolster if you don't have a jester the next upgrade will be bolster no matter the class after that it all depends again on your team if you're a vanguard you're gonna push for crush okay you're gonna push for hold the line if you're a sergeant you're gonna push for bolster you're gonna push for command if you have a leper command upgrade if you're a bulwark, you're gonna push for rampart, all right? You're gonna push for stand fast, okay? And then you're gonna push for strategic withdrawal because it's extremely important on the final map and the final boss. So that's how you should allocate mastery points. Depends, again, on what it says here as his passive class. That will be all for men at arms, basically. It's not a user-friendly, it's not easy to play, but it's one of my favorite characters in the game because it's so freaking versatile and he can cover every freaking position in the game. He does nothing exceptionally well, but he does it all. And that means a lot in a game like this. I mean, in the absurd difficulty and the hardest game in the last 10 years. I hope you'll find this guide useful and I'll be seeing you on the next one.